probably doesn't have any to it. Yeah, it has enough speed to make up for that. So you see the fastest bike that can drift reasonably well. There is a faster bike than this one, but it can't take turns very well, which will have a huge problem in the later levels. This is the Bowser bike, otherwise known as the Flame Runner. Not much to say on this course other than the fact that uh, the ramp that I'm approaching now, if you approach it from the right side, or the left side actually, and click it with half the tire, you get less air time. Uh, this is really important in the sense that air time greatly slows you down in this game. So you want to spend as much time on the ground as possible. Okay. Yeah, I can't hear it. First. I'm going to be. Uh... There you go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let me level in. Um, I'm going to be uh, making a donation for every blue shell that comes my way, whether or not I dodge it or not. I will be uh, donating a little bit, and I'll tally it up afterwards. Yeah. Um, the moles on this course are really common. Uh, try and they leave to slow you down, so you will try and avoid Stay on the ground as much as possible. That's the fact, because, uh, the fastest way to move in this game is the wheelie. Uh, the reason why the bikes are better than cars in this game is because you can use uh, either the control of the wheelie or the control of the wheelie to press the wheelie animation. And that uh, increases your driving speed by a certain percentage. And because a lot of the courses have long um, straights. Another thing is inside the so you can use the fast part of the inside like bikes can. Not all of the bikes have inside drifts, but the ones that do on the stage are very, very good. Yeah, okay. Not particularly great at this course. This course does have a huge skip on it that uh, you can ride mountain. A lot of people are familiar with it. Uh, anyone who follows the game, you ride the mountain, you can go straight over the you do that by jumping off the mushroom on the left over there. There is one shortcut you can do in this one. Yeah. It's some at the back, you might actually see if you get an item for it since it fell off. That's what this one's for it. No, that's not it. There's a straight running in the background. The bouncy mushrooms uh, have very unique boxes. If you hit them at different points, the bouncy mushrooms you get more high. Uh, ideally, I'm trying to hit the low point of the mushroom so that I can really off it and get the low air and stay on the uh, left hand side. Let's try and make sure that I don't actually lose to the CPU on this one. It's entirely possible now. It's a pretty crazy thing. Maybe it's on the left hand. Okay. That makes it really bad RNG for the iron so that's what I've been trying to do on the map. So that allows you to hit the uh like the later points of the mushroom to get lower air. Uh, I didn't really get a great iron out of the boat all the times that I was in pack. If I pulled a mushroom I would have been able to do the shortcut at the end of the lap. But... Not the best race, but it is what it is. I don't consider myself to be very good at any course that has bouncy mushrooms in it. Naming no names. Okay. This is what I've been practicing for. This is a very popular course. A lot of people like this one. There's no major skip on this one other than at the end of the lap. Uh, there is a shortcut that you can take where you use a mushroom to trick off of a hump to skip a turn and go over a lake. It's known as the lake cut. However, it was found recently, and by recently I mean within the past two years, since the game's seven years old, it's, it was actually discovered quite late for the game's lifespan. Um, you can take the cut without a mushroom, so I'm going to be trying my luck there. 
so close. Speak up. Speak up, what, I'm not loud enough? Really? Oh, okay. Should be all right now, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Me being quiet, that's, that's unheard of. That's, that's not common at all. Okay, so like at the end of the lap, you can skip the, um, the turn if you get the trick coming out of the, the, the factory and land in a certain way and drift and trick at the same time coming out of it, you can skip the lake without an item. Doesn't save that much time, but it looks a lot nicer than going around the lake. So I'm gonna try it again. I will grow in time. To do a trick, you do the same thing that you would do with wheelies. There's, there's four trick directions. That's not gonna work. I'm not going for that bad angle. See if I can get it at least once. So you've got you've got an up trick, a left trick, a right trick, and a down trick. And usually it doesn't make much of a difference, but for this one, I'd say that doing an up and a down makes it a lot easier. And you do that by either pressing that direction on the D-pad or by flicking in that direction on your motion control. The conveyor belts change depending on what lap you're on. They're on like a timer cycle. There's been a blooper on this turn every single lap, so that's... I, I get the feeling that's like foreshadowing in some way, and I can't go for it because I'm small. You can't actually make it, so... Uh, that's really, really, really unfortunate. The one lap that I went for it, I didn't quite make it close enough. But. It's not one of my better courses, to say the least. All right, so this course has something that's kind of interesting for offline exclusive. Doesn't that happen online, but it happens offline. Online, the chain chomp on the, one of the turns just has a set um, timestamp when it will come out and do its attacks. On offline, it actually has AI that will target you when you go by it, so it becomes faster to get a trick off the ramp and skip the turn, because it, it won't eat you. It won't attempt to bite you if you take the inside curve. Oh my gosh. Really bad luck there. Uh, fake item boxes can't block red shells, so the first item I pulled was a red. Um, wasn't able to do anything to block it. This is a really common course to um, lose to the CPU as well. So I'd like to point out that it is very possible that I could actually lose to them. Yeah, just because they, the CPU cheat in the offline for this game. Like they, they literally rub a band and move faster than they should. Uh, it's not a problem on a lot of the later tracks because there's a lot of tech that the CPU don't know about. Like any section with a half pipe, they'll waste time going on both sides, whereas you can just stick to one side. But on really basic courses that don't really have much to them, like this one, it becomes a problem. The blue shell comes here, I'm gonna lose. Just wanna point that out. Okay, that should be all right. All right. That's another thing as well. I'm actually, I'm not sure whether or not I'll win every race because it is possible that I could lose races to this just because of the CPU cheat and sometimes the item RNG is really asinine. I actually really, really like this course. This is like one of the first courses that I invested a lot of time into when I first picked up the game, Coconut Mall. It's got interesting, quirky stuff that you can do with the banisters. Since whenever you go up a banister, um, you lose time. And when you uh, start a wheelie outside of a mini turbo, you have to build up speed from ground speed. Uh, if you trick off of the banister and land in a wheelie on the stairs, it puts you at max speed, like straight away. And that saves quite a bit. It also looks really, really flashy if you manage to get it. There's a lot of cool things you can do on this course in the way of like getting low tricks. Like again, as I said, you want to stay on the ground as much as possible. So if you can get a trick to give you boosts, uh, you want to try and like drive it into the ground. So. Um, 
the most of it is utilized on the ground. Kind of finicky to go for that one, but I don't know. When this course is played right, it looks really, really nice. It just flows together really, really well. Just have to hope that the items at least somewhat agree with me. It's actually slower to go for the boost panel all the way to the left at the uh, end of the lap. It's just so far out of the way that it's better to just hug the corner and just take uh, the one on the right and the one in the middle. Oh my goodness, the timing of these items is questionable. Sometimes you can bonk walls and keep your speed, which is really interesting in the sense that um, normally when you hit a wall in this game you come to a complete stop, but if you clip them in a really specific way, like barely clipping them with your elbows essentially, it just cancels the drift, but you can still move after it. And even in some instances you can um, get sent drifting the opposite direction, like the drift physics are really strange, or the inside drifting. but. That's what makes it so broken. Yeah, I'll let you know. It'll be soon. There'll be a course where there won't be much to say. Uh, this course is all about uh, pretty much the opposite of what I said. Most of the time save on this level is about how you manage your airtime. In a lot of instances, it's faster to get airtime because you can take turns tighter. This is a double cut. Okay, that's one. So you can skip the chasm if you um, slow down on the first part and angle yourself to the left. You can actually land and skip two turns in one. As you can see by the map, it saves a lot of time over the CPU. Like this is one of the tracks where the CPU don't really cause much of a problem other than um, uh, the items that they, they generate, but as an actual threat, they're nowhere near you. It's very hard to lose this one. Uh, uh, okay. Should have had a PAL counter instead of a blue one. I've been getting PALs non stop. <laughs> They've already donated like a lot. You can read some donation comments now if you want Zotan, there's not really much to say. <laughs> when you find your mic. Alright. Let me uh, push that up. I am I am tech and also host, so I had to figure out how to turn the mic up. Um, oh, yeah, I'll read a couple. That. Uh, take the hang on, I actually need to lower myself as well. Okay. We have a uh, $20 donation from Quirky Geek who says, this donation is to make sure Nymph and Swan have fun. Good work, boys. And we have a $10 donation from Urusai V. I try to read that <laughs> as good as I can. Uh, waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning to watch Mario Kart Wii. Does that Only count? when Sword is playing, of course. Good luck in the run, good sir. The Penguin Collective sends good wishes to you as well. Stay awesome and focus, Tom. <laughs> P.S. I'm not seeing enough Shinx hype Spam in the chat, let's fix that. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Thanks for the stream, ESA committee. Uh, I'll give you, I'll tell you when you can talk again. Yeah. Thanks. We have the world record holder for the glitch in the room. This course has a huge glitch where you turn around and jump off of a pipe and just do the last turn, but I'm doing the no glitch variant. Let's see if I can get this. Nice. That was not nice on the other hand. Okay, so no glitch wise, um, this course actually has a lot of tech to it. It's one of my favorite courses to play in the no glitch sense. Uh, you want to hug the left uh, route because it has the boost panels. Even though it's out of the way, the boost panels save so much that you take that route and you get a trick coming out. Uh, but inside the mine, 
on the ramp, there's actually two uh, techs in one. The first is the fact that I'm skipping the turn, we call it the turn skip. Uh, you charge a mini turbo and release it, and what you can do is not only do you take the turn tighter, but you fall faster. Because when you go downhill on downhill stretches in this game, you kind of get stuck to it, and there's not really much you can do. It's kind of like a fixed length. Apparently you can't do that when you're small. It's good to know. Well, what I just went for there was the second tech, which is called the wall bounce. There's uh, an invisible wall that hugs the right side of the jump. And if you uh, angle yourself in a certain way and like gently graze the wall on the way down, you can get the wall to push you forward slightly, which not only makes you land sooner, but pushes you further forward as well. Let's see if I can get it on this lap. That's not going to work. No. Normally I have a mushroom in the cave and it, it like fixes the alignment for me. And I'm not going to get that either. Okay, probably going to lose the CP on this one then. Lose <laughs> the, the drop boost as well. I don't know, I'm, I'm too used to the mushroom layout. Like um, in the cave on normal time trials you have a mushroom that you use to um, line yourself up. Am I, I'm, I'm going to try not to, that may have saved me. Yeah, he's going that way for whatever reason. He wanted to go check out the ramp for whatever reason. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm not the greatest at the turn skip mechanic and the wall bounce after it is really dependent on like the angle that you get when you land and I'm still not used to the, the whole timing of it without um, mushrooming directly before. Because with the mushroom you get the speed boost that allows you to stay on the left. But I managed to show it off at least once. So I'm relatively happy with that one. There's not much to say about this track either, other than the fact that there's this pavement jump at the start, which I'm going to miss and get red shelled for missing, so it's karma. And then the fact that the cut up ahead is faster to take on all laps because it gives you a speed boost. Um, no, I wouldn't say so, but that should never happen, I would hope. I would hope there's not a blue going for someone else. What on earth is going on? I need to get ahead again. And that's not a good item to get. Right, I'll try it again. So what you do for the start of the track is you uh, hold a mini turbo and then you release it on the striped pavement like that. And you can bounce over it to take the turn tire. And then you take this uh, mini turbo into the shortcut. And if you propel yourself into it correctly, you can get launched far in to the point where uh, you're practically on the boost panel and it saves a lot of time as opposed to going around. And the CPU never take the route, so they'll, ne they'll never block it. There's no risk to it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. My timing is really, really off. I think I'm getting glued though. No, it's greens. Okay, false alarm. There's a bit of downtime now, you can go for it. Okay, we have a uh, $10 donation from Tazua saying, uh, Sword hype, hey Tom, my furry friend, good luck and don't get FAQ'd too much. No. <laughs> Money goes to runner's choice. Uh, and uh, Ninjas and Carpets donated $3 saying, Yo, what's up, Sword? Ninjas and Carpets here. Good luck on the run and enjoy your time at ESA. P.S. I got a custom uh, Crobat hat on the way. <laughs> Nice, Sword hype. nice. Good and uh, George donated five dollars, saying, "Hi Tom, I'm disappointed you didn't wear your flamingo hat. Much love and good luck for <laughs> MK Wing." Oh, I left it at home. Wait, what? What is this? Do I even want to know what that is? Right. Okay. Cool. This is what I want is. Okay. All right, so this tr this track has a shortcut coming up that is uh, another one that you can take without an item. If I actually got the mini turbo, you release it onto like the, the ledge and it propels you over the grass, over the dirt. It saves a little bit of time. Uh, it's not too difficult other than the fact like the launch is kind of hard to predict how, like how far of a launch you're going to get. But there is a way to get it every time, but it's so precise, like the current and other things come into the factor. Oh my 
goodness. I actually have a fedora on my head right now. Cool. Lovely. Let's see if I can pull a green shell here. This is actually an item strat on here. That's not a green shell. It's actually the worst thing that I could have gotten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Alright. Alright. Let's see if I can head my way back to first. Maybe I'll be able to do the shortcut this time. No mini turbo again. Well, wow, I'm not doing great. I'm not doing great at all. Um, yeah, I have triple greens now, so I'm going to hold on to those. Uh, I can use them. There's a strategy with the, the Goomba on this level. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll tally that on, I guess. That should have been at me, but I was too busy getting played with, I guess. I don't know. Now I'm getting all the greens. Okay. I should be able to do this. Oh, never mind. I'm, no, I don't need them. How about now? That is, that is really bad. That is really, really bad. <laughs> nice. That is well bad. Um, yeah, okay, so normally what you would do is the grass on the right, there's a Goomba that waddles around in front of it. If you have a green shell, you can uh, throw the green at the, the Goomba and a mushroom pops out and you can use that to take the grass. It saves a little bit of time over. Oh, man. No oh, mini turbo and then that. That's what I was talking about with the launch. Uh, sometimes you just don't get any air and you, uh, you just stick to the grass. It becomes slower to do it that way. But it's not thick, heavy off-road. So it's not too bad. It's, it, it's, it just more so looks wrong, I guess. The moment you put the fedora on my head, all this happens. I don't know if I trust this. We'll see if it, it if it cleans itself up. Maybe maybe it'll get better from here on out. Okay, so even though I've been at the back multiple times in this run, it has been unintentional for the most part. This is an intentional part of the run where I will deliberately take a side route to drop positions so I can get a higher place item and take it to the front. That is the best item that I could have gotten from that, so I'm really happy with that. That allows me to dodge any blue shells that come my way and take the shortcut, but I would need no lightning or power to strike to be able to do that. They don't really come out that often. Like, they are rare. I mean, like, I go for them here. That was really questionable. Items pop out of the bushes um, on this level. Uh, bananas, mushrooms, and more rare stars. If a star comes out of a bush, I need to do everything I can to get it. Should be able to take the shortcut now. Yeah, so normally you'd have to take the left route, but because I have uh, triple mushrooms, I can just take this every time, unless I lose them before I get to the shortcut on the next lap. Oh. I mean, there is a strat there, but because the, the ground, like the wall, is actually floor, so you can hug the wall on that turn. That's what I aim to do, to take the turn as tight as possible. There's a mushroom from a bush. Um, but if you go too high up the wall, then you actually hit a wall. There's another mushroom. Oh, there you go. Okay. And the mushroom disappears. So. Yeah, there's open space now. Go for it. Yeah, for sure. We received a three dollar donation from Barfarama, who says, "Sword, how is the run going? Good luck, lots of love from Barfarama, our North Canadian Chris." Thank you, Barfarama. Oh, he's got the voice of champions. Ah, gotcha. Right, so. Okay. Oh. Okay, well there's one. That's the best thing to do with a blue shell. Whenever a blue shell comes, ideally the, the goal is to find a boost panel or something that 
you can land on that will take you to max speed. One thing that I haven't covered is the fact that every time I get hit by something, I'm standing still and charging a mini turbo. It's known as a standstill mini turbo, SSMT. It's what makes the heavyweights so overpowered in this game. Another reason why you have to use Funky Kong is the fact that the lightweights have like the, the stats like acceleration and handling, but they're not really relevant at all because every time you get hit, you can just charge a mini turbo and get back to full speed again. So whenever I get hit, you'll be seeing me stopping and charging a mini turbo. And that's the main reason why I'm being uh, like comboed by items so heavily is that when I'm not moving, I'm more vulnerable. Um, but it's the fastest way to get to top speed because the acceleration of the Bowser bike vehicle I'm using is really, really low. This course is notorious when this game had like its Wi-Fi servers running for the fact that it had a really nasty glitch on it where you could drive around a rock at the start of the lap to get a time around 30 seconds in length. Uh, I won't be doing that along with uh, another cut as well. There's a rock on the right that you can use to skip across if you have a mushroom. And there's also a skip where you can mushroom off the crack and hit the, the, uh, like the wall on the other side. Uh, but um, n none of these cuts are allowed uh, for this category because they're all defined as like a major skip. You skip like major key checkpoints on both of them, so I drive the full lap. I take the right route every single time because it's just the best route. It lines me up to this turn a lot better, it's a lot faster. And I go down here to charge a mini turbo on the floor since airtime is not preferred. Even though you've got the trick ramps on the sides there, it gives you way too much air. Like every jump in this game is unique in the sense that they don't give the same amount of air. Some of them uh, it's better to just not trick off of, which you'll see in another level. I forgot to mention it on Cooper Cape actually. Uh, but in another level, there'll be a jump that I won't do a trick off of because you get so much air that it becomes uh, like worthless to do it. We have just received a $10 donation from Anonymous who says, Hey Sword and Mead is checking in here. Hope you're having a Velocity SA, buddy. And good luck on the rest of the Mario Kart We run and your crush to win. Donation goes to Sword's Choice. I don't know. I, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to get back to you on that one. So I actually know what I'd give it to. Oh boy, oh boy. This track is really technical and it has a lot of small things in it that make it a really good track um, for just trying, showcasing technical stuff. Like at the very start, you've got that, which I didn't do very well, but I managed to perform it. If you charge a mini turbo on the bend and release it at the right time, you can actually skip the turn. Uh, you've got another thing coming up in here. Uh, there's a half pipe, but the half pipe ends like halfway along the wall. So you can actually wrap around the turn and use the boost to uh, continue going around the turn as opposed to having to trick on a half pipe, go to the other side of the wall and then trick off of that one as well. Uh, the bats are really, really bad, so I'm going to do everything I can to avoid them. They Weight doesn't quite work in this game as it should. That's an example of how to not do it. I didn't hit the cactus though. Uh, the, the weight of the bats, they can push you really hard to the point where you fall off. So ideally it's faster to go out of the tomb on the left and to land on the wall to get less air. If the bats are in a problematic position, then I want to not do it just because I don't trust myself. Should have had a power counter. Really should have had a like. If, if I was donating for the pals, I'd be broke. I'd be absolutely broke. Right. It it's harder to do it on lap three because on this course the pillars fall. You've got like the the yellow pillars that gradually fall over time. And on lap three, there's one that appears on that turn. 
that makes it really, really difficult to do it. You have to take it in a really precise way to avoid it. I I managed to make that every lap though, so that's nice. Thought I'd risk it. Yeah, that's what you want to do, ideally. But whenever the bats are in a bad place, I just get all shaken up and would rather not do it. So. It's a really technical course. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's just really fun to drive. There's a lot of small things that add up. But I'm like, I'm sure you're seeing like every single course in the game has like small little unique things that like apply to only that course. And that's what this game's full of. Like a lot of people that play this game tend to like specialize in certain courses because it takes such a long time to learn all of the small bits and pieces that every single track has. This one doesn't really have too much. Uh, it's a really interesting layout in the sense that it tries to like emulate a highway with like the speed. So you've got boost panels littering the section, but you take the same route every single time just because they're in a really like, obvious config that you'd, you'd want to utilize as much of the boost panel as possible. Uh, the vehicle positions are also a thing I have to be looking out for. I know where the vehicles are, they do the same thing every time. I just need to not get hit by items because that throws off my, like, my clock as to where everything is. That's pretty bad. That's even worse. This is the run of the pals, I swear. Okay, so I don't actually know exactly where this is gonna be. Okay, no, it's the next lap. It's gonna be a lorry coming around that turn, I believe. What on earth is this? I've never seen this many pals. I've never seen this many, it's crazy. They're actually like on really good spots to destroy me too. I don't think the vehicle's gonna be a threat now. Yeah, I'm this far behind that that, that milk glory that you saw is usually the one that's like lingering around the turn uh, as you approach it, but due to everything that's happened so far, everything's so far behind what it normally is that it's not a problem. This course has a skip on it where you can take the right side of the spiral and uh, launch yourself through the ceiling and skip the spiral, but I won't be doing that just because it's a bit too cool. It's hard to do with this vehicle as well. I probably wouldn't be able to make it, so. This course is another one that's kind of technical. There's the jump I was talking about where not tripping off it is beneficial. You get a lot of air time going off that jump and you land on boost strip anyway. So it's really counterproductive to trip off it since it gets engulfed by the boost strip that you land on. So there are a few jumps in the game that are like that that you uh, tend to avoid tripping whenever you can. But other than that, it's all about like trying to hop and to clip the back end of a jump to get less air like this one. Um, trying to stick to the ground with the wheelies and the mini turbos on the stair section. Do I can do it here? You know, I can't see. There we go. It's faster to take the left split just because it lines you up for the, um, the spiral a lot better. The right split is used mainly for if you want to take the glitch. too quiet right now. Something's gonna happen. Okay. 
there we go. Felt like something was gonna come sooner or later. I mean, there's not really much to say about this track in particular, um, other than the fact it's all about hugging the turns as tight as possible. Uh, if you jump off the back of that ramp, it sends you a little bit lower and you can change the direction of where you're going. It's all about getting low tricks off of these things as well, the fire geysers at the end. It's really technical, but I wouldn't consider myself to be the person that knows exactly like the technicalities of it well enough to be able to explain it. But there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do on that one. It's definitely one of the most like, uh, driving specific technicality related tracks that probably didn't make any sense at all. No, that didn't. Did not make any sense at all. Much like this track, Rainbow Road, this one doesn't make any sense. It's the last of the new tracks, so after this it will be a retro spree, it will be all of the retro tracks in a row. This is the last of the new tracks. There is a shortcut on this one. It doesn't require an item. Aww, went for it. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, that was a really clean one. I may have gone a bit too high on that one. You've got a figure eight section on the course where you can trick off of the half pipes on the sides and um, uh, like the rings in the middle. Okay, I wasn't allowed to jump there. The rings in the middle, uh, instead of taking the middle because you don't want air, you kind of like hug the sides and trick off the sides and you use the boost from the trick to uh, wheelie off of the crack and uh, skip that one turn. You need a good launch off of the floor to do that. Interesting thing about this track actually that's definitely worth mentioning is that the fastest time on this track is actually with a carp. It's the only uh, record in the whole game that actually is faster on a carp. And it's uh, due to the fact that there's actually a shortcut at the start that is exclusive to outward drift, where you can hug the, uh, you shroom off the hill. Oh no, not that pal. These pals are scaring me. You mushroom down the hill and at the boost jump, you drift off it and you can hug the turn really tight. And because the course has very little straightaways that don't, that just aren't covered in boost panels, the cart can, like stay ahead for most of the lap, so the cart is beneficial to use here. not good. I shouldn't have cancelled that. I would have made that otherwise. When you fall off of the track, since I, I'm making quite a few errors with that, uh, whenever you land, if you press the, the gas the moment you land, you get a uh, drop boost and that almost puts you at full speed. Definitely really beneficial to get it with this character. I think there was an instance where I didn't get that and it, it looked really, really bad. Um, because you have to accelerate from ground speed, which is really, really slow. Could have gone better. I mean, the item RNG so far hasn't been so bad. There's been a lack of blues. There's been a lot of pals and bloopers on really weird places. I'm not used to this kind of RNG. It's usually like lightnings and blues are the things you have to watch out for in this category because you can be lightninged over jumps or blues in really inconvenient spots. And it's mainly the basic courses are the harder ones to beat the CPU and do well in just because they tend to get so many items and just use them all on you. Like this course is another one. The ducks actually have AI on this one, the cataclacks. So I have to take really, really, really wide lines to get away from them because the hitboxes on the cataclacks are much larger than they actually appear. So um, if you go anywhere near the hitbox, they tend to just launch you into the air and it's really slow. And because of how they behave, 
you kind of can't really afford to do a standstill mini turbo when you get hit because they're liable to just chase you down again and flip you in the air again. Yeah, they do very, very bizarre things offline. You've got the like the Metal Gear Solid explanation mark when they see you, so you get a bit of warning time to get out of the way. They take set routes though, like they will always walk the same path at the timer if you don't get flipped by any, so you can tell where they are. That's the main thing I've got to look out for. Uh, like a blue or a lightning comes on this section, it's really bad since I can't move in time. The good thing about pals on this level is that it makes the ducks fall over and they can't actually hit you for a short amount of time, which would allow me to take higher lines. So, they, they don't actually stay buried in the sand for that long, sadly, so I can't really like, capitalize on it as much as I'd like to. Because the moment that they become unburied from the sand, they can flip you up straight in the air again, so you have to be really careful when you're around them. This course is really short and doesn't really have much to say other than I'll be taking the inside lane whenever I can. The water sends you outwards, so you have to be careful to not uh, get hit by an item or go too far to the outskirts because it actually pushes you to the sides. But I take the inside line as much as I can unless there's a boost panel that I need. You don't actually get that many items on this course as well because they're mostly out of your way. There's the item set up coming and then maybe you can pick up an item in the waterfall if you're lucky, but it's a really short track. The shell cut's actually quite nice. Uh, Peach Beach is one of the biggest problems in the whole run, uh, but Yoshi Falls, Ghost Valley too, uh, very, very, very manageable. And then Raceway is a bit of a hit and miss, as you'll see in a moment. The CPU tend to fall off on this course a lot as well. They get bumped off because of the weight and they get sent to the middle of the stage. and that might affect the fact that like, the items never come because they're in such short supply and they're always falling off and losing them. Uh, the next track is the shortest no glitch track in the game. It's a SNES track, so it's based from the Super Nintendo version. Ghost Valley 2, really, really short. If any item luck goes badly here, then I consider that to be quite unfortunate just because it's over and done with so quickly. One thing that I can mention is that I, what I've been doing most of the run with the drifts is that there's many different ways to charge the mini turbo. Uh, the main technique that I'm using to get the mini turbos out fast is something called soft drifting. Uh, to soft drift, basically you push the analog stick in a range where the game thinks it's all the way to the side, so like a hard concentrated right input, but you push it like halfway between that point. I tend to like aim diagonally to do that, and what that does is you charge the mini turbo at the same rate, but you don't go as tight in, so you can take better lines. I don't think I'm gonna have to take the cart when I'm small. I can't remember if you can do it. I'm not gonna risk it. gets me back to top speed really nicely. I'm fortunate that the lightning came because so it came at a really bad time. I had to go around the shortcut. The shortcut stays quite a bit on that one and the items on the side of the shortcut are very buggy in the sense that the shortcut isn't actually part of the route on like, uh, like the game's position tracker. So if you take the shortcut, you gain positions if you don't take the shortcut over people that do, so you are in a higher placement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, why not? Let's see what I get. Okay, sure, that works. This course is a hit and miss. It can go really, really wrong or really, really right. Like that, that's probably an example of wrong. This one is known for the item clusters, and that's not good at all. This one is very notorious for its item clusters online, um, because there's so much off-road potential, you can catch up on this one really, really easily. The CPU don't really use it. I was gonna get hit anyway since I had a fib. I tend to throw fibs away, 
like whenever I get a fake item box, I tend to like over throw it and try and like throw it off the track. Since they're of no real use to me, like it's also likely that I might just drive into it again. Uh, tracking the CPU doesn't really help me in any way since they just rubber band their way back to the top. So you'll probably notice that whenever I get fake item boxes, I've been discarding them practically immediately because I ideally want bananas. A banana is the best item to get against uh, the CPU. The one thing that this course does have is the pipe trick. You can trick on both ends of it if you hop onto it in a, uh, in a really like, precise kind of way and get a little bit of airtime from it. And that's, that's useful. It saves a little bit as well. It obsoletes a chain wheelie, which I'll speak about in a minute since there'll be a course that has a lot of them. And it's quite a big thing in this game when it comes to like the ILs, like chain wheelies are quite important and I've been doing them quite a bit. See if I can get this again though. Okay, I'll take it. I mean, other than the red and the opening being driven kind of badly, that was actually really good luck for a course like that. That can go really, really, really badly. All right, so chain wheelies. May as well talk about it on this course. The wheelie animation only lasts for a set period of time. It lasts for about three and a half, four seconds or so. After that animation ends, uh, the wheelie gets dropped. Um, the fastest way to move on straights usually is just to repeatedly chain them one after another. You just press the button again or you flick the remote again. There's actually a really strict timing to it. Uh, if you, I think there's a one frame window where if you press it at the right moment, none of your acceleration gets lost. And it's quite important for the IL strats in this game that chain wheelies are achieved. So there's a lot of like frame grindy perfectionist stuff going on in a lot of the records. Uh, this course has quite a few of them. This is not the best vehicle to use for this course. Uh, this course is unique in the sense that the ice that I'm driving on right now is considered off-road. Like the whole course, bar the cave, is off-road. Funky Kong does, however, have an off-road stat, so he is the best heavyweight to use, which is just pure coincidence at best. Uh, but ideally, what you would want to do on this course is use the Magic Cruiser and the Lightweight, because the Magic Cruiser has the highest off-road stat and it gains quite a bit on the ice section. The Bowser bike moves faster than the Magic Cruiser in the, in the cave, because it's not off-road, but there's so much ice on the course, like the ratio of ice to cave is, it favors ice so much that the Bowser bike doesn't really stand much of a chance. Uh, but the traction's really, really bad when you're on the ice, it's really slippery, it's hard to like do drifts in the correct direction. And then of course the penguins are also a hazard that you can hit because they like to rub on their bellies and hug or like corners really tight. Uh, but again, like all of the enemies in the offline, they have set patterns. They always do the same thing. So I know where they're gonna be. I tried to take a little bit too much off of that, so I fell in. And that's normally where you'd use the mushroom on this course is to cut that crack. Since there's not really like a defined shortcut here other than to take that turn really tight. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, the FFC Tuxy P is actually based on the Penguins from this course. Uh, me and this course have a bit of an interesting history. Uh, I actually hold the record on this course for this game, uh, and I've been playing it for a very, very long time. I used to have a huge like infatuation with like, the Penguin from Super Mario 64, so. That would explain the, like the Penguin FFC. Uh, funny how these two tracks come one after another is because this one is also another track that benefits greatly from Magic Cruiser use. Nowhere near as badly as the previous course because it's not really, uh, like the course isn't off-road, you just cut the corners to take the off-road. Like you see the light blue water, you can actually drive in that, That's just, uh, it just slows you down slightly. The dark blue is where you would fall off. And what the Magic Cruiser would do, like on this turn, it would hug the inside all the way. It used to be the best vehicle to choose until a way to drive the course with the spear was found and incorporated into the run. But it's not that much faster, honestly. There's like a completely different driving style mechanic on the course, and it's only about 
half a second faster. Uh, the course has very, again, kind of like slippery floor. It's not as bad as the ice, but you kind of get sent outwards. So. And then these jumps are specific to the GBA courses. There's two, the Shy Guy Beach and Bowser's Castle 3, which we'll see later. Uh, what I'm doing on that jump is I am hopping as I touch it to go lower. Uh, because of the principle, you want to be on the ground as much as possible. Yeah, you don't want to spend as any time in the air. And because of where the crabs are and how they move, it's actually a lot better to go on the ground as soon as you can because you get more time to react. The bombs are also a problem. I, uh, there's a ship in the uh, outskirt of the level that's shooting bombs that explode. If you get uh, attacked by items, there's actually a bomb that goes directly in your path. So it's actually really beneficial to not get bad item RNG on that course. Just because you lose quite a bit from that on top of the time that you would lose from uh, the bad item RNG. <coughs> uh, I really like this course. Uh, this is one of my favorite courses. There's quite a lot of depth on this one. Lots of chain wheelies on the long straight, but once you get out of the straight, it's just got a really good flow to it. Like the turns, are, they, they just flow together so nicely. Mm. So this course has quite a few shortcut opportunities. Uh, I will only be able to do one. Oh goodness. All right, that wasn't done well. I'll try that again the next lap, but that was the cut that I wanted to take. There's three. There's that mud cut on the, the back pass there that you just saw, but I need a mushroom to be able to take that. Uh, there's the dock cut that I took where you uh, hug that uh, turn on the left and uh, land on the dock and skip the turn. Or you can combine the two and take the left route uh, and then use a mushroom to skip over the uh, gap and you land in the other shortcut and you use another mushroom. And that's commonly referred to as the double mushroom cut. Don't actually know which path is faster for the variant that I'm doing right now where I'm uh, taking the dock, but it's faster to take the right split on the regular route. So like when you take the, the mud cut, so I'm just used to doing that, that's where I go. And this bridge is quite important as well in this course in the sense that bad iron and RNG happens to you, the bridge goes higher. Ideally, you want to be approaching the bridge when it's down. Uh, bad iron RNG means that on lap three, the bridge will be up, you get more air. Even though you get the boost trick, it's kind of like negated from the fact that you spend so much time in the air. But the bridge is on a cycle, so there's not really much you can do. Yeah, we'll get this again. So I'm actually doing a lot of things with drifts here that I haven't covered as well. As well as uh, soft drifting is what I mentioned, how to get mini turbos fast. There's other ways to do it. When you chain mini turbos in alternate directions like here, when you go right, if you press wheelie briefly in between and immediately start a drift in the opposite direction, you can get a, uh, like a much sharper angle and the, the, the mini turbo starts charging a lot faster. And that's referred to as a slip drift. You don't actually need to wheelie in between, but the wheelie makes it a lot easier. So whenever you see me drift one way and then drift the other way, uh, that's mainly what I'll be utilizing to get the mini turbo out as quick as possible. It's mainly just like optimizing the smaller things in this game. Like, the item RNG plays quite a bit, but optimizing the smaller things is generally where most of the time saves come from. Yeah, go, go, go. yeah, for sure. Okay. Hello? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, we have... Hang on, is this working? It is. Yeah, there we go. We have a uh, 15 cent donation. From okay. Manaku saying, Hey Sword, good luck on the MK3 and Crash 2. A big meaty pause from your obviously most favorite artist, Maniku. Could I get some Shinx hype in the chat? <laughs> okay, and a uh, three dollar donation from Barfarama, saying, also meant to say, Tom, take the fedora off Shinx hype all the way. Glad I got to catch one of your runs at work. Smiley face. 
and a five dollar a five dollar donation from Per saying, Hey Tom, wish you the best of luck during the run. Glad this money is going to a good cause. Looking forward to the Crash 2 race later on today. Once again, wish you the best of luck and hope you're having a good time at ESA. And last one. Barfarama, three dollars. Sherbet Land hype, run of choice. <laughs> Okay, so this course has a few things on it that I have been doing. Um, it's all about trying to hug the corners tight in weird ways. Like, you don't trick off this ramp because you want to, like, drift in the air and land really tight here. If you hug the wall here, you can hit an invisible wall that sends you down, which is really beneficial. It saves a lot more time if you have a mushroom because you can cut the turn. And then here, you have a half pipe. And it's actually faster to just repeatedly, like, jump and wheelie because when you're in the air, wheelie speed transitions over. So, um, so yeah, that's a really technical course. I, I'm not very good at that one though. Uh, it's really difficult to do. But at the start, you've got the ramp that you drift off of. You don't want to trick because you can actually land on the, uh, like the slope and you can take the turn tighter. You've got the invisible wall on the left that you can use to land sooner because that jump sends you really high. And then you've got the half pipe as well that you want to stick to the left hand side and just repeatedly uh, spam wheelies in the air. This is another course that can go very, very, very wrong. So I've got my fingers crossed that uh, the CPU are gentle to me here. Uh, the pokies move left and right. You can snipe them with greens to get them out of the way, but I have a banana, so I'm not going to take any chances of like removing the banana and getting a fake iron box and then getting redded, since that's a common occurrence in these kinds of runs. So I'm just going to hold on to the banana and just use my best judgment to try and avoid hitting the pokey plants. You can double trick this hill if you jump and trick, because uh, the trick uh, like register is quite early there, so you can get one out earlier. And what that does is if you trick, if you jump and trick and then trick again, the speed of the first trick sends you uh, much further, which is a lot more beneficial because you land further on to the point where the wheelie lasts all the way until the next turn. Really should have done it for pals, not blues. I'm tempted to go back in the run and count the amount of pals and do it for that instead. Because it's, it's been... No, it's been pals. I feel like every single track has had a pal in it. Like, I don't know. Correct, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's a Mario Kart Wii run. Like, how can I not? Okay, well that's out of the way, thankfully. Yeah, I'm getting nearer, uh, like the fr we've just passed the three quarter mark now because there's only seven tracks left, so. Although the tracks that are coming up now are like the longer ones, since they're all the retro ones, they save them to the end. This is another course that's uh, quite technical. Um, I spoke briefly about the GBA tracks having uh, like a ramp that's like specific to those that have like low jump properties. This track has five of them in a row that you're about to see right now. So I'm going to try and see if I can get them all. I won't go for the fourth one. I'll explain why for now. I might go for it in another lap. So the gaps over all of the holes are even, excluding the fourth hole. The fourth hole is a lot bigger than the other five. No, the other four, sorry. Um, the yellow ramps that you uh, trick off of there are actually quite big. You can jump off them at different times. So to make the fourth jump, you actually need to jump quite late off the yellow ramp. But the timing is quite strict. It kind of happens really fast. And if you jump too late, then you're already in the air and you've already gotten a high trick. But you can see uh, from the fourth jump that I did, like how high you go compared to the low ones. So it's optimal here to try and get as many lows as you can. Should be able to cut inside the plump. Yeah, nice. And the fireballs are also a problem as well. 
something to take into account is that the fireballs on burst offline will come up over the fourth jump. If it hits you over the jump, it can be quite detrimental. You can fall uh, into the pit. This track does have a big shortcut on it, but uh, for, because of the category, I'm not using it. It actually has two ways to do it, too. Uh, the jumps that I'm talking about have very interesting properties if you hit them from a specific angle. Uh, you don't even need to hit them at a high speed. Uh, if you hit like the corner of them, like where, uh, where, the, where the ramp starts to like curve over, if you touch it from like the very corner there, you can get massive air off of it and that is what allows you to actually skip this huge turn that I'm about to do. Like after this low jump section, you can literally just go to the left off of one of these jumps and skip this turn that I'm doing right now. Uh, you don't even need an item to do it, but because it counts as a skip, uh, I'm not doing it. The fonts on this one aren't actually a threat. They stay stationary and they just go up and down at their own pace and stomp. So you can get around all of them and as long as you're not underneath it when it stomps. The one that's the biggest concern is the one before the low jump section. If it's down, then you have to go around it. But because my item RNG for the first half of that was actually really good, I was able to cut inside, which saves a little bit of time. This is a really, really, really long track from the N64 version. This also has a skip where you can cut this turn and skip the, uh, the spiral there. It doesn't actually save much, it's like the skip that saves the least out of all of them in the whole game. Because you're only like essentially cutting one turn off. The track plays the same otherwise. Uh, the, the ground is actually quite like slidey. It's not like slippery, but you get sent sideways a bit with this vehicle. The traction on this vehicle isn't the best. Uh, it's more optimal to drive this course with the Mac Bike, which is a medium weight vehicle that has a slightly higher drift stat. Compensate speed for drift and mini turbo, but because there's so many like, sharp turns on this course, it, it's definitely better to use the Mac Bike on this one. This one's all about really optimizing your, your lines and trying to like, you can ride like the sides like that, uh, this turn as well, if you ride it. You can take it quite tight, but you have to be careful not to like touch the grass because the grass will make you come to a complete stop. This turn at the end is quite a pain as well. If you start your drift early here on the bridge, you get the mini turbo out slightly sooner, which makes it a lot easier to get around here. I'm not actually sure whether two mini turbos is faster there, but and actually tested. And then Tib's in a bit of an awkward spot, so I was trying to go to the right of it and I didn't want to hit it, but I went a little bit too far to the right and grazed the grass for a little bit. For some reason, my item RNG on this course is usually quite good. I don't know why. I have no clue why. Um, I don't tend to get bad item luck on this one that much. I don't really know why that is. It's quite a long, drawn-out course as well, and the items are spread out, so that might be why, even though they finish relatively close to you for considering how long the course is. Yeah. Okay, uh, I thought I'd just chat on this one because you have a $200 donation from Anonymous. I think their name's still in the message. Uh, hello, Sword. You're a fantastic guy who gives viewers like me much more than a laugh or two. You make me have a smile on my face always at every stream. Now go and finish our running style. Love, Cypher. Aww. Alright, so this course has the most enemy AI out of all the courses in the game. It has not only the Chain Chomp, 
from Mario Circuit that will try to eat you, but these piranha plants as well. So unfortunately, I have to take really wide, precarious lines on a lot of the turns to avoid being made like food for these enemies. But unfortunately, I have to stick it in really far out on a lot of the turns. But you can still do a lot of cool stuff. Um, this course has a lot of like really nice turns that flow into one another. A perfect example of a, of a slip drift is coming up here in the tunnel where you charge them and you cover that way, quickly get it out and then release the line down the middle. And there's a blue, yeah. Oh, okay. That could have been bad. Oh, okay. All right. And then for this, you can double trick the hump, which I did on that one. If you jump at the right time, you can get a trick out. And for the same reason of Desert Hills, it launches you quite further. This is an interesting race. Yeah, I like that. Maybe, maybe I'll just suddenly have all of the blues that I should have had the whole run in the last cup. That, that'd be interesting. Okay, there's a red shell coming, I won't get rid of this. The Goombas aren't really, ox you can't really hit the Goombas on this one because of the hump section that they're on. It's really hard to, like the mushroom always jumps out in a really peculiar manner and it's kind of hard to hit them because they usually land like in the groves of the hump. So I don't like aim to get green shells to hit the Goombas on this one. I'll do it on Mario Circuit and Cooper Kate, but I, it doesn't really help me much on this one. Well, here's the last cup, so you never know. Maybe, maybe my wallet will be bled dry. Maybe all the blues will come now. You never know. This is another SNES course. Uh, SNES Mario Circuit 3, in particular. Nothing really much to say on this one. Uh, really basic driving. Just not really much going on. I could get decked by the CPU toward the end, and this turns a problem as well, in the sense that if a red shell comes around the turn, I have to angle myself in a specific way to avoid it. Since on U-turns, reds can hit you from the side, if you're not careful. But I have the best items right now, like I have triple bananas and a green. So as long as there's no power, or shock, or blue, nothing's gonna happen to me. This is another course that is greatly beneficial on the Mac bike, for the reasons I mentioned on Parkway. Uh, the turns are really, really tight. Uh, there's a shortcut uh, that I just went past uh, over the dirt that you use a mushroom to get over. I heard something. I know I heard something. I, I just can't see it. The red and white tape is what you can drive on. It's pretty much the only way to like, optimize your lines is to get as close to the dirt as you can on this one. And this vehicle can barely just make that U-turn up ahead. Really good RNG on that race. That's really good. Alternatively, I could just have a, a really empty cut where nothing happens. It tends to happen all the time towards the end. This game's very, very weird with its behavior. Like sometimes you just get runs where the items are really nice and you don't drive so great, and then there's other runs where you drive fantastic but the items are really against you. Sometimes the CPU cheat harder than other times. It's, it's really interesting. You never know what you're going to get with an item run. And I've definitely gotten something quite interesting here with the amount of pals that I've had. I've never seen this many pals in one run. I'm definitely tempted to go back and look and see how many. So this is a course that you'd normally use the spear for because it has uh, the most speed and there aren't that many tight turns. But because I'm using this vehicle, there's actually a, a different way to take the hedge mazes a lot more beneficial to stick it out to the right and get the mini turbos and then mini turbo back in. Normally with um, the faster vehicle, because it has better acceleration, you stick to the middle, take less of a wide line, and you just constantly break wheelies and start them again. And because the acceleration is so good, that the wheelie uh, just almost gets to top speed almost immediately. But I can't do that with this vehicle. Because if I break my wheelie by hopping out of it, I'll never reach top speed again by the next wheelie. It's a lot better to just go this way, get a mini turbo. Mini turbo will always take you to top speed in this game as well, um, as long as you don't turn too hard out of it. 
that's another really important thing I forgot to mention is that wheelies cannot be interfered unless you are either mushrooming or on a boost panel. They need to be left alone and you can't turn them. So it's mainly about getting a line and sticking with it in this game. And you have to have really good like perception of which way you're going to be facing, where you're going to be going way in advance. Especially on courses like this where like the horizons are quite far away so you have to know exactly how to angle yourself. The chain chomps on this course uh, don't target you. They move in a set route, they just do their own thing in the hedge maze. So I can tell where they're going to be. They're going to be in the way now but I may be able to squeeze past them. Yeah, I mean I had to jump out of the way because I'm a little bit behind due to the blue but otherwise that was a really really clean Peach Gardens. I love that about this game. Never speak too soon with this game. It'll take advantage of it. It will take advantage of it. It's good though. I was hoping something like that would happen. Well, even despite that, that's a good race by my standards, so I'm happy with that one. The last cup is quite long compared to the rest, so it's sort of like the longer courses. It has Mario Soget 3, which is short, but the rest are quite lengthy. This is another course that's really, really difficult to drive for my vehicle. Uh, Mac bike dominates here as well due to being able to drift tighter. Uh, really, really bumpy course. I'm not really a fan, but I'll do what I can. Only real thing to say is that there's a shortcut that I'm sure everybody knows about in the crevice section of the course. Um, and then down here you want to hug the uh, right side of the mountain because you've got these ramps here that give you really slow drawn out bad tricks that you don't want so you just want to hug the right side of the mountain and then travel the way down try and wheelie as much as you can another weird thing to note is that like if you're wheeling down a hill and you start a wheelie in the air and when you land sometimes you return to full speed not always but sometimes uh, the shortcut that you just saw me do is the shortcut that I was referring to. It's the one that probably everybody knows about. Uh, it was in Double Dash as well. It's a lot easier to do in this game though, because in Double Dash you move a lot faster. Inside Drift makes it uh, uh, quite manageable. And you just slow down, you just brake coming up to it. Ugh. I actually see exactly where I was angled there, due to the ink. You can ride some of the turns as well like that, which gives you a really good line up. So you can just take that. Alright, so because I'm small. Oh, never mind. Okay. I wasn't entirely sure. If I'd been lightened a little bit closer to the bridge, like if I was on the bridge, it would have actually been faster to jump off the side of the bridge, since if you fall off the bridge you will always get respawned at the end and when you respawn you're always at full size. But since I was slightly before the bridge I was able to gather a slight bit of speed to take the bridge so it may have been around the same speed. This is a really, really awkward course to drive. Okay, I don't know when that's going to reach me. I got the warning really early there because there's the cannon directly overhead. Okay, it's there. I haven't actually lost any races as well. Not too bad. Cl came close a few times, but I haven't actually lost any. Well, let's not change that at all. Yeah, that, that'd, be, that'd be pretty bad. I mean, it's impossible to lose everything overall. Yeah, this is the last uh, track of the whole thing. It's uh, the last course of the Lightning Cup and it's the Bowser's castle. No one to split right now, so that's fine. Like, he's got like two, two and a half minutes. Uh, the quamps on the room there, the two that go side by side, again have like AI akin to uh, like the, the cat quacks on Peach Beach, the piranha plants and the chain chomps. Uh, 
There are a few straps on this one. It's all about uh, getting mini turbos out as quickly as possible. You've got the stairwell there. If you charge the mini turbo and release it into a wheelie at the top of the stairs, you glide over the stairs. The stairs have really, really weird like collision. When you drive down them, you kind of like, stick to them in a really weird way. And then you've got the cut at the end of the lap that I can do. Okay. You can land on the wall at the end of the lap and cut the turn tire to get around the, the castle structure. So, I'll let you know when. We like in the next minute and a half, so. Oh goodness. Scratch that. Yep. I need all of them. All of the blues. See if I can do it this time. Yeah, it's like that. There's gonna be a green here. Oh no, they, they got rid of it for me. This course is quite lengthy. Um, I think it's the longest course in the game, actually, like of the Nintendo tracks. It's actually better to land on the warp here, since uh, you don't actually need the trick from that one. And one thing that I've been doing a lot in the run that I haven't mentioned as well, that I should probably mention now before the run ends, is the fact that on a lot of the drifts, uh, if you change the direction of the stick mid-air, so if I like jump to the right but like hold left briefly, I can change uh, the way that I am like angled in the air. And this is called a spin drift. I'm doing it on the last turn so that I can take the, uh, the walk up like, tight. Yes, yeah, it's, it's doing it now, that's good. I'm happy. Power counter would have been better though, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ready on time, by the way. I'll let you know. <laughs> and time. No? 119.24. Okay. Okay. I made the estimate. Are we counting the blues that hit me when the race ends as well? Yeah, sure, why not? Go back through the whole run and watch that. 16. Okay. That's 32. 32 track run. I'm donating 32 then. That's perfect. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's actually perfect. I'm donating £2 for every blue that came, so... 2 times 16, 32. There you go. Okay. Works out perfectly. Much better than the cows. Yeah. The game you do. All right. Can I do a few shout outs before I head off? Yeah? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. A uh, few things to shout out. Uh, you can still play this game online. There's a service called WiimFi, spelled W I I M M F I. If you want to look into that and you're still interested in playing this game, it's on the growth definitely worth looking into. There's quite a few videos on how to do it. Um, definitely look into that. Uh, shout out to uh, the Mario Kart Players Page community. Uh, they've been doing time trialing since the original game. All eight games are available. You can look at those and uh, do um, time trials for individual levels and stuff. And then shout out to Mario Kart Boards. Uh, it's like a place that's growing for like Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart 8. Um, like community wise, so if you want to get involved in Mario Kart Wii 7 or 8, that's the place to go. I would definitely recommend that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Huge thanks to all my supporters as well. It means the world to me. Thank you for everything. And that's, that's the run. That is it. And thank you for everyone sitting on the couch watching that mess. That mess of a run. It was good. Yeah? All right. Yeah, I think so. I think we're good. You might want to like unclip the mic. Okay. Whoops. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Don't I'll want do to go that. walking around the room with that attached to your. Uh, if I can get it off, that'd be fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Ping. <laughs> Yeah.
give it away. Playing CTs. Right, you're not, yeah. Do you get me this? 